Hello everyone, uh, every uh, peace activist and every pro-Palestinian activist is claiming that Israel is breaking international laws. Uh, what they mean is that the Israeli settlement in East Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria are against the Article 49 of the Four Geneva Convention uh, from 1949 that uh, forbid an occupying power uh, to forcibly transfer its own population in or out an occupied territory. Now the question is, does uh, Judea and Samaria and East Jerusalem are really an occupied territory? Well, let's take a look at that. Uh, Israel acquired the Judea and Samaria areas in 1967 in the Six Day War. Before that, uh, Jordan controlled those areas from 1948 until uh, 1967 for n uh, 19 years. Now, Jordan occupied those territories in the War of Liberation in 1948-1949 and it annexed uh, Judea and Samaria and East Jerusalem to the Hashemite Kingdom of Jordan, of Transjordan, in 1950. But only Great Britain and Pakistan and uh, the nobles of the local Arabs in Judea and Samaria uh, ever uh, acknowledged that. Now, because only Great Britain and Pakistan uh, acknowledge that uh, annexation, that means that legally Jordan wasn't this uh, legal sovereignty over those territories. And because Jordan wasn't legal uh, sovereignty over those territories, it makes a very big question uh, from whom exactly Israel did uh, occupy those territories if this is actually an occupied territory. Because Jordan apparently wasn't the legal sovereignty uh, over the, those territories and during the 19 years of uh, Jordan control, uh, the sovereignty of those territories was uh, was on hold, it was suspended. So you have to look at who controlled those territories before the Jordanian. Now, uh, it was the British that controlled those uh, territories, uh, all of Palestine, all of Transjordan was under control uh, of the British at that time. Now, the British didn't control that area like they control Scotland uh, or Wales, it wasn't a uh, part of the uh, United Kingdom and it wasn't a part of the British Dominion like Canada or Australia and it wasn't a British colony like India or Kenya. It was a very special territory and the British uh, received a mandate from the League of Nations to uh, administer that territory with its very special obligation. The League of Nations uh, was an international organization very similar to the United Nations of today. It existed up until 1946 and in 1920, it signed the San Remo Convention with the British uh, uh, Empire. In that, in that convention, it uh, entrusts the British Empire to administer Palestine and to secure the establishment of a national home for the Jewish people. And it also acknowledged the historic connection between the Jewish people and its homeland in Palestine, Israel. And I will quote from the San Remo Convention uh, right now, and it says, the mandatory shall be responsible for placing the country under such political, administrative and economic condition as will secure the establishment of the Jewish national home as laid down in preamble and the development of self-governing institutions and also for safeguarding the civil and religious right of all the inhabitants of Palestine irrespective of race and religion. And that means that the Salomo Convention and the British Manual over Palestine may the Jews' right to settle uh, the area west of the Jordan River an undeniable right. Now you may say that the League of Nations doesn't exist anymore and it was 90 years ago so maybe it doesn't apply anymore but the fact is that the UN Charter from 1945 does acknowledge previous uh, existing uh, international instrument about disputed territories uh, uh, regarding uh, uh, minorities or uh, nations or people that have a uh, national uh, inspiration like the Jewish people and its homeland uh, in, the, in Israel and it says in article uh, 80 in, in the UN Charter it says except as, as may be agreed upon an individual trustship agreement made under article 77, 79, 81 placing each territory under the trustship system and until such agreement have been concluded, nothing in this chapter shall be construed in or of itself to alter in any manner the rights whatsoever of any states or any peoples or the terms of existing international instrument 
to which members of the United Nations may be respectively be parties. And that means that even the United uh, Nations can acknowledge, uh, can I'm sorry, can cancel and can can ignore the Jews' right to settle uh, the area uh, west of the Jordan River. It actually may may, may make that right an undeniable right. And this is why, uh, if this is the administration, the legal uh, sovereignty over that area before the Israelis took control over that area, and obviously it seems that this, this uh, administrative had a clear obligation to secure uh, Jewish independence in those areas, including the West Bank and East Jerusalem, and to secure a uh, Jewish settlement in those areas. So this means that it, there's no way that Israel is occupying those territories. And this is why this is not an occupied territory and doesn't break Article 49 of uh, the Four Geneva Convention from 1949. And Israel doesn't break international law in that matter. I will tell you more about the West Bank, uh, Judea and Samaria, uh, East Jerusalem, Jerusalem, about its Im uh, importance to uh, the Israeli faith, the Israeli uh, nation and its history. But I'm going to do it in the next video. Alright, so see you. Shalom.